Hey guys, hope you guys are doing great. My name is Nintendo Kunalo and welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, so before I jump into today's video, I'd like to ask you guys to like, share, subscribe and do all the YouTube things that needs to be done. So today I'm just going to be talking about how to um, optimize and maybe how to prepare uh, for upgrading, right? So, for upgrading. so I'm just going to share my own story. So I matriculated in 2016, right? I matriculated in 2016 <clears throat> and I was able to upgrade my marks at a college called Edumont College in 2017. And then from 2017 to 2018 was then uh, then that I did uh, my first year and my only year in BC Biological Sciences in the extended program. And then from 2018 to 2019, 2019 was the year that I did my first year uh, in medicine. So I'm currently studying medicine at the University of Pretoria. And I truly believe that had I not gone through this grading journey that I did, I truly believe that I wouldn't have made it into medicine. Right. It is important for me to share that it was quite possible for me to have matriculated and skipped the upgrading journey and jump straight into BSc Biological Sciences and try to compete to enter into medicine. But I don't believe that had I not gone through that upgrading journey, would I have been able to compete effectively um, to make it into medicine, right? So some of the things I'm going to discuss today are coming from research, some of the research that I've done myself um, that was interesting. So for, one day I'm, I'm doing my first year back in 2019, I'm doing my first year and uh, I was doing this module called philosophy, right? So, <laughs> I, will, I really didn't like this. I really didn't like that uh, that module. I really didn't like that module. Um, yeah. So I remember I, I get angry. Right? I get angry, man. It took me a lot to excel in mathematics and physical sciences. It, it took me a lot. The amount of cross nights that I had to do, you know, the amount of work that I had to put in just in order to be able to excel in mathematics and physical sciences, only to never do them ever again. It frustrated me at that point, and it led me to sit down and study. Um, why exactly did you need me to excel? Why exactly did you need me to struggle so much in this subject? And only to never um, want that knowledge from me ever again, right? And these are the things that I... I, I I came up with from my own research but I realized that <clears throat> in university it's not really how smart you are that they are after right but it's it's how it's the person you've become in high school so for example I'll tell you that for you to be accepted in medicine you need I'm just making an example you need a distinction in maths you need a distinction in physics you need this mark in this subject but the most important thing in, in wanting to ask for the subjects is the person you've become to get those marks. So, for example, think about someone who has seven distinctions in high school. A person who has seven distinctions in high school is living a totally different life from someone who doesn't have any distinctions. And that person who has seven distinctions has probably built up the capacity to work. Because imagine having a distinction in mathematics. At the same time, having a distinction in physical sciences, and some people you might find that they're, they're even having distinctions in subjects like life science and accounting and all the languages and life orientation and things like that. You know, the capacity it takes and the build up and the capacity to do work at that level is higher than a person who hasn't built that over time. And usually, universities look for that. This people would see this person was able to do great work like this capacity to work with a lot of subjects at the same time means that he will be he or she will be able um to 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 cope with the demands that the university is going to place on them so that is the first thing i want to talk about so if you have to upgrade the first thing you have to realize is that you are not ready to move on to tertiary education right you are not ready to more. So that's why if I go back to the example of the college I went to, this college that I went to was started or founded by a lecturer from Vitz University. And the whole point of this college was to bridge the gap 
between high school and university, right? Most of us who went to that college were students who were not ready <laughs> to take in the precious and the hard work that is needed to be in university. This is why we had to be taken through a process of properly building that work capacity up that prepared us you know, for university. Right, so that is the first thing I'd, I'd say um, you must try to do. Utilize this upgrading journey, first of all, to build your capacity up, to build your capacity to work. So how do you do this? You do this by setting up routines for yourself and increasing the work done each time you're able to do something. So for example, and this is depending on whether you're doing this upgrading journey at home or in a school, right? Set a study timetable and fight to stay on track with the timetable. This is one of the very most important thing, things that we don't really take time to work on. So for example, take time and say, I'm going to study one hour every day and work to do that consistently. And once you see that you have conquered now having done one hour every day, increase it maybe to one hour, 30 minutes, increase it maybe to two hours, increase the time until maybe you can study to four, five, six, seven hours. One thing I realized, especially when you in a degree like medicine, you realize that you are surrounded by people who can study eight, close to eight hours without ever resting. Some can even take it um, more than that. And you find that some of us who have started working on these things later on in life, you know, we struggle to be able to keep up with that workload. So you find that these are the people that you are up against when maybe applying to whatever degree you'd like to apply for in university. Find that these are people that from grade eight, from grade nine, from grade 10 have been working on increasing their capacity to work, right? So this is the first thing I'd like you to do is to set up a proper timetable, right? That allows you, that allows you to, to grow your working capacity slowly but surely, slowly but surely, slowly but surely. People who are able to study at that high level Right, people have worked on that for some time. They didn't they didn't come in a short space of time, but it's something that was worked upon. You know, uh, like I said, that if if it was possible for me to have gone straight from metric, from metric straight into PSE, but now that I took time in that college to work on my capacity, here's how my schedule was when I was doing BSc. So, from about um. 6 a.m. in the morning to about half past five, I was at school, right? And this is Monday to Friday. So half past five, I'd get to my room. Half past seven, I'd always go to the library. And I was always back by half past 11, right? Had I not gone to that college, I would not, I would not have been able to sustain that timetable for long periods of time. So that is what, this is the first thing I'd like you to build upon. The second thing, that I'd probably like you to build upon. Um, and this is better when you're upgrading far away from home because it allows you to be freer that way. So the other thing that I had to do was to learn myself to do which time am I able to be more um, efficient. Do I study better early in the morning? Do I study better late at night? Do I prefer cross nights? Or maybe cross nighting is, doesn't work for me that well. So that period is also the time to learn that. It's very, very important um, to, to, to study yourself early on, right, within that journey. So that is one of the other things that I would uh, like to tell you about. The third thing, <clears throat> and this is also to prepare you for university, is to not do this alone. You know, one of the things that uh, we do... <clears throat> One of the things that we do, um, especially when we are trying to get to a certain degree, is we walk alone a lot. You find that, um, especially a competitive degree qualification like medicine, you try to work alone as much as possible um, in order to to in order to try and get as much in order to try and get ahead of all the people you are competing with, right? While that sounds okay. But you working with a group will help you even better, right? So if maybe you are um, upgrading mathematics and physical sciences, I have 
in the videos um, shed another video of how to excel mathematics and physical sciences you can go check that out but for this one for this uh, particular phase you don't know what you don't know right so partnering with people so let's say now you are doing the same upgrading you're upgrading mathematics and physical sciences you're doing the same subject for that upgrading journey right so you come together as a group and you ask each other questions the thing that that helps you with is to poke holes in the knowledge that you have whereby you realize that oh okay i didn't know this very well i didn't know this topic very well i didn't know that topic very well now i have to come back and polish on this topic i have to come back and polish on that topic so one of the things i'd say that is form groups not only to study with but to keep each other accountable in terms of the routine and to, and to discuss the content of the work that you guys are doing and that will always 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 help you and it will save you time because now if i come together with other groups of people it's not only my routine or it's not only the amount of hours that i work that is helping me at that point it's my hours it's this partner's hours it's that partner's hours put together combined and with that knowledge and with that amount of content that's the, the this is how i'm going to face the exam so for today guys i just like to keep it uh to that i might talk about other things that i found important and things that i learned from that college which are really really truly um important and have helped me a lot but for now to try to keep this video short as possible i'm just gonna cut it here thank you for watching